Now we come to the next law, which is the which is the Guy Lussac's law, pressure temperature relationship. So it is the Guy Lussac. <coughs> we call it Guy, I think. Guy Lussac. That is the pressure temperature relationship. And again, I draw your attention to the same thing. The, there was something called mass. There is something called pressure, then we have volume, and then the temperature, not necessarily in that order, there is no precedence. But, but when I am saying pressure and temperature, mass always we keep constant, and when we are saying pressure and temperature are related, we mean to say that the mass and volume has to be kept constant. And the pressure and temperature are then varied, right? Okay. So what I am trying to do is this. I have, I have fixed the volume. So I have taken a, a fixed volume container. So say a cube or a cuboid does not matter. So this is fixed. What are you supposed to do? You can increase or decrease its temperature. And that is all. Okay. That's all you are permitted to do. Volume does not change. And our, our experience says, and, and how do you experience? Say in a pressure cooker kind of thing, you are not allowing the volume to change. Correct? It's, it's, a, it's a rigid thing, but and you are heating it up. Is it not? So what should happen to the pressure inside? It should go up. Is it not? The pressure is supposed to go up. And, and, and that's why that, that whistle at the top goes, goes up if the pressure there is sufficient to push it up. Or even otherwise, it keeps on, it, it keeps on releasing some kind, amount of steam, right? So there your, your steam is the gas that, that you are heating and, and you are actually doing the same thing. So our experience says that uh, as I increase my temperature, my pressure should go up. Is it not? My pressure should go up. You, you must have observed it in, 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 in the car tires, right? What happens? If it gets heated up and you have put in some amount of gas into it and normally since though it is made up of rubber and obviously the volume will go up slightly but not so much as to be of any perceptible impact. And you start driving your car very fast. Okay, then, then maybe due to the temperature, uh, the temperature goes high, very, very high. And due to that, it starts expanding and there is every possibility that the tire will burst. And it does burst. Okay, so, so going at a high speed for a long distance is not the same game as, as moving in the city roads at, at some some tire pressure and, and it's no wonder that uh, at these highways where you allow 120 to be the normal thing, so many cars have their tires burst and, and, and the cars overturn. Uh, if we change the pressure of the tires, then does it affect the speed? Uh, you change the what? Pressure of the tires. If it's you reduce it. 34 psi, we make it 32 psi. Minus. Then it's fine, it's better. The grip over the road goes up, so you'll brake better. But there will be more friction, so, so 
the more part of the tire is with the road so so it will it will wear off easily the wear will be more but there will be no harm but more will be harm harmful hmm? it's a safer journey yes at higher pressures you should if, if you cannot do anything else then at least reduce the tire pressure if you plan to go at say some 140 kmph okay fine uh, but you never know whether uh, from 34 going to 32 will do or 30 will do but at least you will not kind of topple right <clears throat> uh, suddenly uh, the front if it uh, the, if the front goes then it is chaotic because that's where your uh, your your handle is right wheel is and that's what you maneuver so suddenly it will take a turn in the direction in which the tire has gone it might you know, it might not flip it might or might not depends but kind of it will suddenly change direction absolutely suddenly so maybe if someone is overtaking you, that's the danger or, or you cut across the road like that. Whatever you do, hmm, there is a sudden change in radius. So this moves smaller at the same speed, smaller distance and this moves larger. So that is what actually changes the whole thing. All right. So it is, it is a kind of a God forbid kind of thing. Okay. So, so let us and, and what he did this, this fellow, uh, the gay Luzak or guy Luzak, what he did, he, he tried to establish a relationship. But let us be clear that we already have Boyle's law which says that PV is equal to constant, is it not? And we have the Charles law which says that this is a constant. Now our aim is what? To somehow eliminate V between the two. If I want a relation between the pressure and the temperature, if I eliminate, eliminate V, I, I get what I want, right? Hmm? So what do I do? Hmm? <coughs> P is directly um, I want a relationship between P and T so so how do I get it fine so if I sort of P V divided by V divided by T here but here there is here, here we have pressure as constant and here you have temperature constant. So you have to keep that into account, right? So how do I do that? Hmm? Because what happens? This is this is when the temperature is a constant. This is when the pressure is the constant. No. Now I want the pressure to be variable and temperature to be variable. Is it not? Hmm? So what happens, this gives me K1 upon K2 and it seems that somehow P into T is equal to a constant. But you know, this is constant because pressure and temperature are constant and this is variable because, but I, I say that pressure and temperature both have to be variable. You understand that? Hmm? So, so what do we have, what, uh, what, what outlet do we have, yes? So these won't be valid in this situation. But you tell me, this says that pressure is a constant, this says that, a temp that the temperature is a constant. 
this k1 if you say that it is a constant so you say that at a given temperature is it not at a given this is a so this this is a constant at a given temperature so if i if i change my temperature if i change my temperature then this changes but in that pressure is variable right here the pressure is variable but and temperature that, is not and in the other one p is variable so obviously they both how 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 now when you start varying them see you say that it is this and they are constant but they are not constant when you start varying p and t both of them start varying and how do they vary becomes important otherwise how will you be able to know how the whole thing changes you have started varying this right you say that i want to vary the temperature and hence the pressure will also vary and i want to check how it, how it behaves no hmm so it says that p into t is equal to k1 by k2 erroneously we feel that these are constant they are not they vary so you never know whether uh, pt is a constant it cannot be the moment you change t this changes so k1 changes correct oh how does k1 change why not for a temperature that was we, okay. we have plotted it we have plotted that no we have already plotted it if i if i change p if i change t then k1 changes if i change p then this changes and here both are changing so the right hand side is not a constant okay now by conducting this experiment he found out that so so this is something that is wrong so he found out that if the mass of the gas here was a constant then at constant volume the pressure is directly proportional to the temperature in kelvin temperature in kelvin so he found out that for a given mass of gas the pressure is directly proportional to the temperature is directly proportional to the temperature if the volume is kept constant so he came to the conclusion that p is directly proportional to t this is what our common sense also says we know that it will increase so it has to be directly proportional by what factor we don't know yet but somehow what was established was if you if you double the temperature then the pressure becomes double now let us try to understand it in some other way so you have got a container like this fine <clears throat> fine this is at a particular temperature and a particular volume fine this is the volume maybe 
this is a larger one and this is a sliding piston let us try to try to understand what this did not give perhaps this will give so if you make the temperature if you make the temperature double what does the charles law say what does the charles law say that this volume will become double is it not v is directly proportional to t so so perhaps this this piston will will go somewhere here the volume is doubled hmm? if if the height doubles then the volume doubles So, so, so this is at this is the same container, two T. I am still with with what law? Charles. Charles says this. Hmm. The pressure is still the same. So, pressure here is the same as the pressure here. Okay. Now, I wanted in this, I want my volume to be constant, is it not? So you press it back, you press it back to the same point. With 2t only. So let it go. Fine, it has gone up. Now you compress it back. Temperature being constant. So from here to here it became Charles. Here to here it becomes boils. I have halved the volume. No. So here it is this and the volume is, is V, here it is this, the volume is 2V. Now I compress it back, keeping the temperature same. What happens to the pressure? Becomes what? 2P. 2P, volume is V. What has happened? It's interesting, you know. It's so usually interesting. This is Charles. Charles. This is Boyles. And this is Guy Luzan. This is not. So, what have I got? I doubled my temperature. My pressure doubled. I used, I used what? These two, the Charles and the Boyles, to come to this. So, so, so it can be derived. It can be derived from the from the Charles law. and the Boyle's law. Understand? Do we understand that? So now, now look at this. This is your Guy Lussac's law. Now, a process that occurs at a constant 
volume is called an isochoric process. Isochoric. Isochore is a constant volume. Remember this term. CHOR, ICK, IC. Okay. Isochoric process. So, so let us try to try to plot this. It's easy to plot. No? So, this is my temperature and this is my pressure. So, how should it look? How should it look? So, maybe a straight. Yeah, we will have to introduce a constant. So, P becomes equal to K3T. These constants are very misleading. So, don't kind of latch on to them. Okay. There are certain conditions under which they are a constant. They are not just, just a constant like that. Right. So, so this is K3T. P is equal to K3T. Fine. And this is at some volume. So, say V1. Okay, or say V2. Now, what if I lower my volume? <coughs> you understand? Why? Because I want to, uh, to, to do the whole thing at, at some different volume. Why the dot? Because T is 0, you will not be able to reach. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. If I, if I consider, if I do it at a, a bigger volume or a bigger volume, huh? If I, if I, if I increase the volume, what happens? The pressure will increase. So if I con conduct the whole experiment at an increased volume. So, so, so instead of this, I suddenly say, no, I, I'll keep it fixed here. So, suddenly the pressure will go down. So, what happens? Increased volume takes me here. Increased volume takes me here. And a decreased volume takes me down. Is it not? Oh no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Increased volume will come here. At the same temperature, the pressure goes down, right? And, and decreased volume goes there. So, V3 greater than V2 is greater than V1. That's how it goes. Correct? This is 0. And this is, these curves, these PT curves drawn drawn at curves kaha I'll be telling you drawn at a constant volume are called are called isochores. Isochores. <coughs> Straight lines are actually curves and they are considered to be a small part of a circle of infinite radius. Fine. So, so everything that you draw is a curve. Okay. And there is no distinction between a straight line and a and a curve in a sense. Yes. What was your doubt? Uh, the dotted line that we drew in the chart draw was uh, mainly because we cannot achieve a negative volume. No, because we cannot achieve zero temperature. So, if you have not plotted this, this is only extrapolation, right? Because you have not reached here. So, you cannot say with any certainty that it is, yes, at we have reached 0k 
and and see this is the volume we got okay you never know you don't know you don't know see because the whole thing has a mass so it has got some protons and electrons and neutrons so even if you crush the whole thing maybe some volume should be there but you don't know how the mass starts behaving at at does it vanish or or, or what happens hmm? so there are still some areas of the nature that is hidden from us you never know what will happen there hmm? and those will be great 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 days when you actually get to get to that point and see what happens so that's why these these curves are drawn drawn dotted okay because because this is not an experimental data this is actually an extrapolation of of the of the curve right sorry it is an extrapolation of the curve so so we understand fine and 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 we know why why this varies like that and, and this simple simple understanding is quite 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 essential to to your understanding the whole process okay